Hello there everyone, uh, if you have any requests for topics of any videos that you'd like me to cover then please let me know. Today's video is just such a request from a subscriber wanted a follow on video from the one that I did in RSUs, Restricted Stock Units. So when you get stock options, if you're working for big tech companies and you get some shares, then a video on how they are taxed. But this particular um, question was all about what happens, say, once you've got your shares um, and you don't sell them straight away, so you don't cash them in, but you just hold them indefinitely and then decide to sell them in the future. What are the capital gains implications thereof? Particularly if you've been awarded multiple tranches of shares. And it gets us onto the concept of what we call share pooling in the capital gains tax vernacular. So today's video is all about that. How do we work out the capital gains when you sell your RSUs down the line, maybe several months or even years after they have vested and they're sat there in your account? So let's just take a, an example, some random numbers that I've just made up and we'll go through it. Now assume this individual has received four separate tranches of RSUs. So the first one, tranche number one, a thousand, they got a thousand shares, stock price five dollars. It's a US tech company. The first thing we have to do, the first thing we have to do is convert everything into pounds sterling. Because from, from a UK capital gains tax point of view, everything's got to be in UK uh, currency. So we're going to look at the cost of, of these, the cost of these shares for a future capital gain. And we're saying, right, on the first tranche, a thousand, five dollars, that an exchange rate at the time, at the time you acquired them, at the time they vested, at the time they were yours, that is the exchange rate we look at. Let's say it's 1.5 dollar to the pound, which means that the cost of those shares for any future disposal, 3,333. So remember, notwithstanding the fact that, yes, you would pay income tax on receiving these things, often paid for in lieu of receiving your full entitlement or deducted by a PAYE, but basically the stuff, the stock that you're left with, this is the cost. Tranche number two, 3,000 shares, four US dollars, say. Again, convert at the time that you acquired the tranche. This could have been six months, 12 months, 18 months after tranche one. Exchange rate changed to 1.3, 9,231. And then we do the same thing for tranche three and tranche four, which could be a year down the line or two years, whatever it is. 2,000 shares, $6 a share, exchange rate 1.7, 500, $7, 1.4. And we just do the conversion and then we add these up. And this is what we call the share pool for capital gains tax. The tax man basically says, when you sell some of these from this pool, rather than try and say, well, we'll do it on a first in, first out basis or a last in, first out basis, so that whatever you sell first has to come from this or vice versa. He just says, look, amalgamate the lot, basically. And this is called a share pool, if it's the same share to the same company. Um, did a separate video, by the way, on this when it comes to Bitcoin and how you have to have separate pools for the different types of crypto. So whether it be Bitcoin, Litecoin, but basically assuming this is one tech company, it's one stock. So we can pool the cost of all, acquiring all the shares in this one company. So this is what we've got. So this, this individual, this employee has accumulated 6,500 shares in Techco, and the cost in the share pool, 22,123. So that's our starting data, if you will, for working out any future capital gains, if and when the employee decides to sell any of these RSUs that are vested. So moving forward, let's say that they do decide to sell and they're going to sell a transfer. They're going to sell 2,500 of these shares. So... 2,500 shares, the market price that they could get for those shares at this point, let's say it's $8 a share and the conversion rate $1.6 per pound. So for capital gains tax, the sales price is just 2,500 times $8 a share, 
multiplied by the exchange rate, sterling equivalent, £12,500. So that's what they receive on a sterling basis for selling 2,500 shares. That's the easy bit. The hard bit, well, it's not that hard, I want to show you, but the, the tricky bit is what is the cost of those shares? So, well, the cost of the shares is worked out on a fraction basis. He's offloaded 2,500 shares, but in total, in his pool, he's got 6,500 shares. So the first bit of the calculation is to say, well, 2,500 divided by 6,500, so that's the bit he's got rid of, divided by the total that he has, times by the pool amount, this 22,000. So that's the, that's the trick, eight and a half grand cost. Capital gain, just shy of four grand. Now, of course, whether any capital gains tax is due is depending on if he's got anything else knocking about in the year. And of course, he's got an annual exemption of 12,300 and something or other. Um, best part of 12 and a half grand annual exemption. So in the absence of anything else, capital wise, no capital gains tax. But you'd start off by working that out. And that is how you do it. Number of shares gone over what you started with times the cost of the pool to so basically attribute you know, the cost of the, the shares that he's offloaded. Rather than say, like I said at the start, rather than say, well, really, that 2,500 is a 1,000 of that and 1,500 of that. No, that's not how you do it. That's the whole pooling mechanism. You just lump it all together and just say, number sold divided by total multiplied by the pool cost. Okay, so moving forward the example, and this guy decides in another year or two years or whenever to sell another portion of these, these RSUs that he's got in his account, and this time he decides to sell 3,000. So remember, he started off with 6,500, sold 2,500, and he says, look, I'm going to sell another three. The time is right. I like the stock price. It's $12. It's got up 12 US dollars per share. Exchange rate 1.7. I think I'm going to get rid of them in the marketplace. So the sales price, the, 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 the amount that he's going to get on a sterling basis is just over 21,000 for 3,000 shares. And again, for capital gains, we need to determine what is the cost price. Because capital gains is always the same. It's the difference between sales price and cost price. So the deemed cost price on this, again, coming back to our part disposal of our pool, £3,000 is the number of shares that he's getting rid of, over £4,000. Because in, remember, in this previous example, he had 6500 But once he sold 25000 he's left with four. So the denominator on the fraction, the bottom bit, changes from 6500 to 4000 So he's basically getting rid of three quarters of what he's got left, 3000 over 4000 And then this figure changes as well. This is your pool carried forward after you've got rid of this so your pool cost started at 22 grand but we're saying eight and a half of that was already accounted for in the previous sale which means that what have you got left is 13 and a half grand cost and then 3,000 over 4,000 times that 10,000 leaves a capital gain of just shy of 11,000 pounds again subject to what else he's got going on as to determine the actual capital gains tax, but the gain, 11,000. So that's how share pooling works on RSUs and indeed any other stocks and shares that you've got held outside tax efficient wrappers like ICES and SIPs. If you've got them in your in a trading account, a dealing account, this under the same company shares, this would be how they are, are taxed from a capital gains tax point of view, the so-called Section 104 share pooling rules which does make life a lot easier rather than having to like i said try and track and match them to the various tranches uh that you purchased originally so um anything else to say about that so so yes then and then of course let's say moving it on again at this stage here he's offloaded 5500 and then let's just say he says i've got a thousand shares left i'll just get rid of those then that's easy the the base cost is the easiest calculation because there's, at that point, there's nothing then left. It's just the 22,000 less that and less that will be the, the, final, the final cost. So, 
Just an overview there on capital gains tax treatment and share pools uh, as they are applicable to RSUs. So hopefully you liked that video. If you did, please do remember to hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you soon.